Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, whether you have a Raspberry Pi or you administer your own server somewhere on the internet or whether you have Linux on the desktop or on a laptop, it's really helpful to know how the file hierarchy works. What do all those different directories mean? Slash etc, slash home, slash var. What are they all for and what are their different meanings? So it doesn't matter whether you're using the command line or you're using a GUI file explorer of some kind, you're still going to need to understand what all those different directories do. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the first thing to look at is the general hierarchy for folders and directories uh, inside of Linux and other Unix-like operating systems. We call it a tree, though really it's an upside down tree because the root is at the top and the leaves are at the bottom. But in uh, Linux, the, the root is called root and that's slash and that's the very, very top directory. You can't go with any higher up in this hierarchy. Now, beneath that, there are some top level directories, for example, bin, etc., home, temp, and so on. Now, below those, you can then get other directories. Now, notice when I said bin, it's really slash bin. So it's root bin. That's how you define the whole name, root bin. And then when you have something else below, for example, slash USR, which I'm going to pronounce as user, and I'll explain why in a few minutes. So don't jump down to the comments and complain about it. But slash user, if we have folders, directories underneath that, we have slash user slash bin, slash user slash lib, slash user slash sbin. And then below that, if you have, for example, a folder below slash user slash lib, it will be slash user slash lib slash Bluetooth. OK, so we get this thing uh, tree building up, this hierarchy building up and the very, very bottom of it, the leaf, where there are just files, there are no more folders in this case. I don't think there are any more folders in slash user slash lib slash Bluetooth. And so you can navigate around this tree by going up one level or down into another folder. OK, and you name them using this hierarchy, starting at the root and then going downwards. Now we can actually go over to a Raspberry Pi and look at some of these different directories. OK, so the default directory you have when you connect to a Linux machine, the Raspberry Pi here, for example, is slash home and then the name of your uh, user. And in this case, I'm logged in as Pi. And if you type PWT, print working directory, slash home slash Pi, and this is where all of my files are. So in here, I might have uh, downloads, I might have documents, I might have videos, music, I might have SRC there you can see is my source directory where I do building different projects. So this is my directory and this is where I keep my stuff. And every user on the system would have their own directory where they keep their own uh, things. Now, it's interesting, if you were doing system admin, you might want to actually have the home directory. Okay, so that's the just the home directory on a separate disk because obviously if you've got many, many users, so we're talking about a big multi-user system here, then this is going to get the most activity and also you're going to have the most uh, need for disk space. But also having it on a separate disk means you can back it up separately than backing up the whole uh, of the system. But that's just if you're using a big multi-system uh, uh, you know, computer server. But here for just a Raspberry Pi, it's absolutely fine. Now the next directory I want to go to is slash USR, which I said earlier on I pronounce slash user and I will pronounce it slash user because that is actually what it is. Okay, way back in the day this was actually user but without the letter E in it and then your home directory was actually in slash user slash users with an E and an S at the end. And here you can just see a uh, clip from uh, a quote from a book about uh, True64, which is a Unix uh, operating system. And it tells you that the user directory used to be slash user slash users. So nowadays, for reasons I can't explain, people want to call it user system resources or universal system resources. It's just the word user without the E, just like, you know, Many, many different marketing things and very different names are spelt just to find. And this was just short because they couldn't be bothered to keep typing, um, you know, four letters. And many of the directories will see slash bin, slash etc, slash dev, slash lib. They're all three letter ones and user was user. Before we go on to look at the next directory, I just wanted to point out if you want to learn more about Linux, there is a great deal at the moment on the Linux Power User Bundle. It's only around for the next five days, so you might want to move quick to get this. But it does include a lot of interesting uh, courses here. 
here, including Linux for beginners, get familiar with the Linux operating system and the command line, and Linux command line essentials become a Linux power user. And these are an affiliate link, which means that if you do click on it, you will support this channel, but more importantly, you can just for $19, get yourself a whole bunch more of Linux education. Okay, let's go on and look at the next directory. So in the user directory, you get all of the programs and data that you need to run user land programs. And probably the most important is slash user slash bin. And in here, you'll find programs like uh, zip. We can do an ls uh, of zip. You'll find programs like uh, curl. So this is where user land programs go and where you can use them. There is also a user slash uh, lib. Okay, and in here you'll find, there we go, we can just quickly see there, Python uh, and other things. So here you'll find lots of libraries that you need to run user land programs. They all stay in lib for library. And another interesting one is actually slash sbin. So the s there is going to be for like super user, uh, which is root privileges. Okay, and so these are programs that run that require you to have root privilege to, to use them. Uh, programs that you have to do uh, sudo, superdo, uh, super user before you start to uh, actually run them. Now, although there is a user slash bin and a user slash s bin, there is also just a slash bin. So that's a very interesting direction. Now, the difference is here is that the slash bin has to be on the same disk as the boot up because these are programs that run before other disks are mounted. So if slash uh, user was on a different disk, if slash home was on a different disk, when the system first boots up, you'll find that user is there because it's on the same disk. So these are programs that can run, including binaries, when there is no user partition available. So slash user slash bin is not available. Okay, only slash bin is available. And the way Linux and uh, Unix type operating systems boot up, they have different startup states. And there's one state which is called single user mode, which is where uh, the disks aren't mounted. There isn't a multi-user operating system yet. It's only one user. And that's the early part of the boot. But the bin programs have to be there. And of course, you'll find in bin programs like um, grep and you'll find you know less and you'll find uh, the shell itself and you'll find uh, cat. So these are all the kind of the, the programs that you need to use uh, all the time, regardless of what is actually a, a, a mounted and what state you are during the boot up. And there is also the equivalent for programs that require root privilege slash uh, S bin. So these are programs that you'll need to call using either when you're logged in as root or using uh, SU do, super user do. Uh, and those will include programs, for example, like uh, FSCK for file system check, MKFS for make file system. Uh, the mount program is in here in all of its different uh, glories. You can find them all there. So these are programs that you can run, but you need to have um, root privileges. And again, they're there before things like uh, the user disk might be mounted during the startup process during single user mode. Another interesting directory is slash etc. And this is basically where all the configuration files are stored. So all the different servers and, and programs that run, they're always gonna have a configuration file. So as an example, there is resolve.conf, okay? And that just tells you the name server that you're using, 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 in this case. And so that's just a very simple example of a configuration file. There can be lots more in here to do with email servers and databases and uh, you know, um, the uh, stuff with DHCP and DNS and networking. There's loads of stuff that can go in here, but basically this is where all the configuration files go. Another important directory is slash dev. It doesn't stand for development, it stands for devices. And this is where you find the files that represent devices. Now I do have a video on this channel about, for example, how you partition a, a Linux disk using the command line. And I show you that you use slash dev slash SDA1 or whatever like that. So in fact, if we just do a quick list here, we can see there are loopback devices, there are terminal devices, there are disk devices. Uh, another important one in here is uh, slash null because this is, this is like a sinkhole. You can send things to slash dev slash null and they will just disappear. It does, doesn't write it to a disk, doesn't copy it to memory, doesn't do anything to over the network. It just destroys all the data. So that's a good example of uh, something you can find in slash dev. 
Another interesting directory is slash boot. This is where, of course, all of the files that are needed for booting up right, right, right at the very beginning. It needs to know where it's going to get the kernel from, for example. And in fact, you can actually uh, list the kernel in here. Uh, there you go, kernel 7.img uh, and some variations there. So that is where the Linux kernel is. And if you do a file on that, if you actually say uh, file... Uh, like that, it'll actually say Linux kernel arm boot executable. So that is where the kernel is. So the those stuff is there in boot, so that the uh, operating system knows where it's starting at the very the bootloader really knows where to go to to read that file system. Slash lib is another top level directory. This is where all the library files are contained that are necessary to boot the system. So again, it's not on slash user slash lib. It's not anywhere else. It's just the files that are needed to boot the system. Uh, and as you can see, not too much in there, but definitely what you need to get the system up and running. Slash var is another important directory. This is for variable, variable length files. And that really means log files, queues for emails, things that, things that can grow in size. So that's why you have var, uh, log and in here you have all of the log files that are kept about the what's going on in the system what happened during boot what's happening at different levels because these can grow in size then they get kind of as you can see the .gz files here mean that they get compressed and archived so that you don't keep all these big log files around so slash var for variable length email queues another if you've got an email server running and you've got hundreds thousands of emails flowing through it then this this directory may grow and shrink in size at night time. Maybe it's quite small during the day. It's, the disk usage is much higher. So variable length stuff goes in here. And of course you need enough space to have to cope with the peak usage uh, of your system. Okay, just two more to mention slash temp TMP without the E, just like user is without the E. This is the temporary directory. Okay, and this is where files you can put that you only need just for, you know, now and maybe they will get, well, they will get deleted, probably at reboot, maybe on a regular basis according to some job that runs. So files in here, as you can see, they've all got funny names because they're not real files that people want. There's just a unique name sticks it here in slash temp and it will del get deleted at some point. So if you are doing things, it's good to put them in temp if you need the file just quickly, but don't think it might be there the next time the system reboots. And the last directory we're gonna cover today is slash proc for processes. This gives you live information in a kind of a readable way. And also there's some binary files in here about the current processes. Probably the most famous file in here is uh, CPU info, which lists about the CPU that you've got running uh, on your device. So here it's telling me it's an ARM v7 processor and all that stuff that we read there. So uh, the CPU info is in there. If you listen here, all those numbers there on the left hand side are all the processes that are currently running and you can find out information about those. Another one here, look at this uptime. There you go, that tells me uh, in a non-human readable way about the uptime. Uh, but those do have a meaning version there. So there's always different files in here that you can actually look at. Uh, mem info, there you go, nice big long list of all of the current way the memory is being used. So slash proc for processes, kernel and process information that you can access. Okay, so there you have it, an overview of all the different directories and a kind of an idea of what you get in each of those different directories. I really hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.